Welcome to Dare to Dream. This is Debbie Dashinger. I'm so grateful that you're here with us today at the show. This show has been nominated for two People's Choice Podcast Awards, as well as a Webby Award. And I just taught a master class at PodFest for two days in a row. PodFest is the biggest podcasters event. And that was phenomenal. Met a lot of very cool people. And this show is always consistently ranked in the top best in all of self-improvement on Apple Podcasts. And it's trending these weeks in Portugal. And for the countries that pop, I thank you uh, for everybody around the world who really heeds this number one transformation conversation message. And they're also on the path. I myself am a visibility coach. I teach people how to write a page turner book how to take that book to an international best-selling status, and then how to be interviewed on radio and podcasts to get massive results like finding your tribe and filling workshops and selling your books. And I've got some free gifts for you. I've got some videos that teach you how to be interviewed right away and what to do and what to prepare, as well as a template to fill in so you know in one sentence how to say your message out to the world. Go to debbiedashinger.com slash message. It's D-E-B-B-I-D-A-C-H-I-N-G-E-R.com slash message. And a big thank you to the sponsors of this show, Dr. Dane here, as well as Access Consciousness. They do magnificent healing work all around the world. Go to Dr. Dane here, H-E-E-R.com, as well as accessconsciousness.com. Well, on our show last week, I promised you a new face to this show, and I'm super excited about it. I've done a little bit of work with her. I vetted her, so to speak, which is pretty funny, but it's a cool thing to do around healing. And I like that she's a really fresh young face. So I'm going to be bringing on the show my guest today, Raquel Escobar Rios an intuitive mentor, therapist, and a guide who offers inspiration. She's got over nine years experience in healing, plus a lifetime of psychic awareness. Raquel recovers a natural balance in people and environments. Her background is in arts, pedagogy, drama, holistic therapy, and film. Originally from Spain, Ms. Rios currently lives in London. And you can find out more about her at galacticrhythm.com. Raquel, welcome to Dare to Dream. It is so great to have you. Finally. Finally, yes. Uh, hello. Hi. Uh, first of all, your, your name, I could say it over and over, Raquel Escobar Rios. It's so like, oh, passionate a name, yes? Yes. I think uh, it's the culture. It's very passionate as well, as you can imagine. <laughs> you <laughs> named well, my beauty. And when your bio reads, Raquel recovers a natural balance in people and environments. So I'm very curious about that. What does that mean? It does not, not feng shui, right? What does that mean specifically? What is it you help balance? And what are the kind of issues that you find that need alignment and need balance? It can be anything, starting from one person that needs a recovery of health because, for, okay, um, to simplify, for me, everything is health. Health is everything. Healthy body, healthy mind, healthy relationships, healthy work, healthy communication, healthy environment, everything. So um, to recover health, in an individual, we work one-to-one. -one. In a group as well, a group can be they don't know each other because they share a, a common theme. Or the group, it might be a business, it might be a project, a family, and uh, a home as well, a space, and a land, and an organization. So, so many things <laughs> in regards to recovering the, the health is because we are naturally healthy. Mm. Uh, health is our natural state of being when we are out of alignment because we are so much in the mind or there is a problem that normally is temporary. They, they, it has a reason. It's not bad. It's for sorting it out or it is to allow us to do things differently in order to grow. So 
what I do is to help people recover the natural state of who they really are because that's perfection already. It's interesting that you say that exactly as you do. I literally just read this quote yesterday and it's actually hitting me because I've had a health problem, an ongoing health problem. And for the first time, I think I understood it. So the, the quote is, for a man who has health, he has 1,000 dreams. For the man who does not have health, he has one dream, right? And that one dream, of course, is to have health. So I get that. I understand what you mean and why it's so important to have that. So if somebody is out of alignment and myself, anybody listening says, yeah, I've got an autoimmune or I've got, you know, ongoing allergies or I've got this hip issue or I've got arthritis, my goodness, right? There's a buffet of what's possible for people. So do you actually see through them or somehow what's happening in their body or do you receive psychic information? How do you suss out what's going on and what's needed? Normally before I meet the person in person or in distance, I am already sensing what they are feeling. Mm. And if they have a pain, I get the pain as well. Of mm. course, as soon as I get the pain, I ask myself, is this mine? And I get the, the answer. <laughs> And uh, most often it's not mine and it's someone else and I get as well information of the reason why is that pain. Then when I meet the person, of course, straight away I cannot throw all the information because it's too much to handle because the mind is not ready yet. But I guide the person step by step in a way that it opens up and they can see it for themselves. And that's um, more powerful because they see it for themselves and they sort it out for themselves as well. I am just a facilitator, the channel in between them with themselves. Yeah, it's interesting. And you've always been like this. You were born like this with these gifts. I was born strange. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the club. <laughs> yeah. yeah, since I remember... Mm, well, I, I remember very, very young, but I mean, in regards to psychic experiences, uh, strong ones, uh, maybe age of three. And, and I remember dreams as well at, at age that it happened. They were premonitions and, and going to the future, going to the past and spirits and UFO. Oh, good. Thank God. <laughs> Energies yes. and... Uh, feeling as well how people were feeling and it, when they were lying as well and uh, and seeing that they were lying because they were scared I mean it's like I better be quiet because I'm going to make a mess because if I say the truth then I get punished as well <laughs> <laughs> so yeah such a childhood <laughs> and were you accepted in your family with having these gifts and <laughs> It was very funny because my parents are very young and the teachers, they always call my mother to, to ask her to take me to a specialist. And, uh, and they were showing her my drawings, telling my mother my stuff. And, uh, and my mother said, I really don't know what to do with this girl. <laughs> she's strange and she says things that I have no idea where does she learn these things. <laughs> And of course, she didn't take me to a specialist or anyone. But I remember that at the age of four, she was asking me for a very um, an, an advice that you would ask to a, a physiotherapist, a physiotherapist, sorry, to a a counselor or or to a, a therapist. You know what I mean? Like not to a a girl for years old. But anyway, I knew what to say as well. <laughs> and I was giving her the advice that she never took. But then life uh, forced her to do that. And that was like once I already left when I was 18. But, um, but yeah, it was, uh, for me, it was fun. But I knew when I was very young what to say and what not to say. Because I noticed that people are scared, are scared of spirits. And, 
and um, of uh, being revealed the truth. So then I had to balance as well to be polite <laughs> and uh, and also to to not get into trouble as well. And now it's much easier because now I know when to talk, when not to talk, and how to approach the situation because. I am an adult, but being a child, uh, I understand children is not easy. <laughs> yeah, that's a prevalent story with people who are gifted like you. Uh, so interesting. <laughs> uh, did you ever hold on to those drawings, by the way? Do you have any of them? The hold on to? Yeah, did you keep the drawings from when you were a child? Um, what did you mean with drawings? Yeah, you said that your teachers were showing. Ah, the drawings, mother. yes, yes. No, but, but I remember one <laughs> specifically that it was full of mermaids and the mermaids have a lot of details and I was drawing very well the nipples and, <laughs> and there was a, a prince there with the crown and a cape and oh, everyone there in the rocks. <laughs> the, the scenario was so beautiful, but... And then I got so embarrassed because the nipples were out. <laughs> <laughs> and the teacher, how, how on earth a four years old girl is drawing this? And my mother said, I have no idea. She never seen a movie or anything related that make her think that way. <laughs> <laughs> and I was so embarrassed. I should draw like a very bad. I should not do that anymore. <laughs> And after that, I was drawing, but just being careful to not be very specific. Oh, my God. And, uh, and yeah, I remember that one because I think I got through my dice. <laughs> <laughs> the mermaid nipple trauma. <laughs> oh, my God. It should be framed somewhere. That's fabulous. Yeah. <laughs> That's so great. And so the, also, Raquel, you are really good and you do a lot of talking about astrology, which I love. And you talk about how we're governed by astro, astrological motion. I've never quite heard it said like that. So can you talk a little bit about how does astrological motion impact us and what does that represent? Well, imagine the science that we have <laughs> compared to the science of a planet. <laughs> I think that the biggest scale governs is more <laughs> if we believe that we are going to conquer Mars. <laughs> Sorry, but sometimes I laugh at the humanity situation. <laughs> I've never seen astrology be so hilarious in my life. <laughs> yeah, of course, imagine. Of course, all the gravitational forces, it has an impact on Earth and all the movements and everything has a rhythm and everything is flowing perfectly. And in the cycles of life that we are born at each particular time mm. with each planetary alignment, it, it, it's all perfect. It's like an orchestra that is mm. showing that our life is so perfect and we mm. don't see it and we don't perceive because we are so stuck in our mind. But the moment we connect with this energy, with the astrology or the stars, like we realize who we really are, that we are everything and we are all planets, all influences at one and also all zodiac signs as well. We have part of all of them. Of course, we might experience or we might express more of one or another. It depends on which aspect, aspect in, in life and situation or relationship to another individual that has a composite of many alignments as well so and in, because we are in a very small scale we don't see it because we have a perception that is so tiny but when we expand our awareness and we see how everything is working and it's all perfect and we can do this we don't need to detach from who we are and to go to space to see this. All we need is to connect with who we are, with the source of light in our heart, expand this and let the mind settle. Let the mind be here present in this space, in this universe. And we see how everything is perfect in our life, how all the connections we have, all relationships fits perfectly and how everything has 
the right time while when we feel good because we are in alignment and grateful and enjoying this life we are resonating at a higher frequency it's like a song like we are listening to a happy song where beautiful things happen at the same time and uh, and yeah this is uh, we are governed by astrological motion is because it's not up to us as individuals it's up to the everything at once and this doesn't mean as well that we are um, that we don't have a free will or that we are disconnected or, or no bow no it's today the opposite is that we are much more than what we think we are and that we can um, we can tap into the frequency that we want for example if we have pluto that is bothering us for example that's not bad that's like a, a bit of a kick saying hey move on that that's good you know there are things to let go and something need to reform or renew and uh, i notice as well many people that they get attached a lot to negative aspects of planets or situations but i don't see anything as negative uh, i see everything as beautiful and as positive because we need to know how to approach and it's always for a good reason and we never stop we just continue moving and flowing and of course people pass away and that's very sad when we are here and they depart but when we see or we realize or feel because i believe that we all are mediums mediums and we can connect with the spirit realm so we understand that their time is perfect and it's the time for them to be where they are right now and we are still connected and thanks to this connection everything is um, perfect because uh, we connect in dreams but also at any time and it's so important to listen and uh, to listen not just with the ears which even the ears it helps to be present and balanced <laughs> but to listen with the heart because we feel the connection with each spirit with even the people that are alive on earth right now we can feel the connection as well and also with the planets because the planets are like uh, huge beings like at the moment we belong to planet earth and it's so important to be aware of this that we are earth this is what we are made of earth but there is a lot of interest in many people to go to mars i have no idea what are they going to do in mars because they think that they are going to survive there. <laughs> but the conditions are not right <laughs> what's the point to be wearing a helmet for the rest of your life but uh, you know if we are earth you know and, and it's not just the the biology but it's also the right position in the distance to the sun with the weather and everything so it's nature natura who we are i think is very important to enjoy the position where we are governed by the astrological motions <laughs> yeah when you say that it's interesting you know when you you were touching your arm and saying uh we are earth which is i've never thought of it like that and then we are so much like Earth, aren't we? Because we're mostly comprised of water. So is Earth mostly comprised of water? I think it would be interesting to get deeper into that and take a look at what are the parallels between how we are as humans and what the Earth actually is and what it's composed of. And so that leads me to another curiosity that just popped, which is, so are there cosmic laws? You said free will. We have free will, but we are on this earth and we are here for a reason. And it's good to accept what is and not have to wonder about rushing off to another planet. We're ready from them anyway. <laughs> and so what is a cosmic law? How does that impact us? Well, the cosmic laws of the universe are the ones that cannot be denied and are also the ones that are guiding us towards evolution. All planets are spinning, constantly moving forward to the center of the galaxy. 
So everything is leading towards unity, towards oneness. So this is a big law of oneness, of who we are. So we are governed by this. Everything that it does not resonate with this oneness, is, it causes suffering. And of course, this suffering is a kind of um, misalignment. And if we are not in tune, and if we are not flowing with ease, with this oneness forward, we are going to suffer. And of course, immediately pain appears in the body, suffering in any sort, like emotional or anything. And this is a sign, a sign that is saying, hey, hey, you are not forward. <laughs> You are backward and this resistance that you are creating, you are not uh, flowing with the cosmic laws and uh, you are um, doing things, trying to do in a different way that is not real. It's like living a lie. And when we are living a lie, our body weakens. And if we weaken, we are not in our power. So the cosmic laws are the ones that empower us to be who we really are. Okay, empower us to be who we are. And, and what about self-governing? So if it comes to self-governing and we need to make decisions, and I hate to use the word figure out, but, but try to suss out what's really best for me, you know, with the greatest result for everybody involved. So we're self-governing. How do we navigate that powerfully? A lot of people, mm seek for advice onto someone else or seek for approval on the outside or guidance or or acceptance and they always look at an authority i understand that if they need guidance in a specific area that they ask for help to someone who is an expert on the field or someone who knows more that's totally understandable but when it requires uh, guidance that no one can make a decision for you, you need to choose. You cannot leave that in the hands of other people because that's, in a, that's, an, that's not responsible <laughs> and that causes a lot of problems. So with self-governing, I mean the ability for oneself to take decisions and uh, to know what's right. Because uh, what is the best for you, the best of the best, is the best for everyone else at the same time. That's 100%. If what is the best for you is not good for other people, that's not the best for you either. That's what the mind thinks it is. But when you really connect deeper and the truth it never comes from the mind, it comes from the heart and it feels uh, very peaceful at the same time. When, when you feel this peace and this expansion, you know what is right and you make the right choices. And by doing what is the best for you, everyone gets involved. Let me give you an example. Yes. Imagine that you are uh, choosing a, a career and you are married and your partner is against because wants you to be cleaning at home. <laughs> And then you feel bad because you say, but my career requires me traveling. And the husband say, no, but I love you. And I don't want you to be in the presence of other men. And uh, who knows where you are traveling around <laughs> and who are you meeting and who is looking at you. And I really love you. And I want you to be here with me. And the wife say, oh, yes, he really loves me. <laughs> and then he stays. <laughs> That wasn't right <laughs> because that's selfish from the man. And the, the first, there is no conversation in between both of them. But if the woman realized that it's so important, her career, that by doing so, she is also helping her husband because even she can take the husband as well with her. For mm -hmm. example, she already. Yeah. let go of, of the best option. And instead of governing herself, she allow a fear to take over and a fear to govern her, the fear of the husband and also her fear of uh, him getting upset or whatever, it's connected to it. So this is why it's so important to not um, stay 
just in one perception, if something arises, that it seems that, oh, it seems that it's not good, the choice I want to make. It's important to not stop there and to go even deeper and see what is this telling me? Is this true? And ask yourself, or something is not right because the feeling says everything. The mind doesn't know, but the feeling says what is right and what is not. And what is right is obvious because you feel expansive and peaceful and, and your heart, you, you can feel it. Otherwise, if something is not well, it's important to, to meditate a bit and to center and to reorganize uh, the thoughts by not thinking, but by making space for the mind to settle and to get clarity. Because sometimes people think that they need to find a solution and they think more and talk more and, and a lot, but that's, that goes nowhere. It goes, it, it doesn't go more forward. It's totally the opposite. It goes spinning everywhere and nowhere. So it's important to stop thinking and clear and the more relaxed and the more peaceful, the more clarity. And there is where best, de best decisions are made. What about manifesting? Do you have a perspective or point of view about ways that we can manifest things, big things? Yes. Not in our realm, yeah. Yeah, I, for when I work one-to-one uh, -one or in groups, I use a <coughs> manifestation process from Life Alignment, the technique I use for healing. And, uh, and it's amazing. It's really amazing because it's, it goes very deep and, uh, and it, it involves so many things that we are not aware of, but everything appears and things that we don't know. It, it's like the system it guides you towards uh, the unseen. And, uh, but for, for a person who doesn't do this and want to manifest something, I always will say to ask oneself if really you want to manifest that thing and why you want to manifest that. What does it mean? Because there are a lot of things that are unnecessary and the person doesn't really want because maybe that's why it's not manifested yet. And if really want to manifest something, there are underlying things as well. And to have a lot of clarity of what is really the way, what is uh, the way the person is looking to feel. Because it's not to manifest a thing, it's the sensation of experiencing that thing and what's the feeling. And without having that feeling before, it's very difficult to manifest that because it will be chasing something, but it never happens because at some point the creation has to occur. And the creation for materialization to manifest something physical or an experience it requires emotion because the emotion is the energy that activates the field in order to be manifested. And because we are so powerful, we are so powerful manifestors and we need to really feel it. And it's not about the thing or that, it's about feeling it already. And once you feel it, you know that you don't need to manifest that in order to feel because you are perfect already. And, and you are grateful for everything that you are, that you have and everything around. And this way, it's, uh, it closes the gap and it makes life so easy. Mm. So for instance, let's say somebody has a physical condition and with the physical condition, they're told, uh, this can be helped completely changed. I'll, I'll give you a good one, actually, because this one is actually so expensive. Uh, stem cells, right? And stem cells are not covered by insurance. So, but stem cells will heal you. So stem cells, let's say it's a $35,000 procedure uh, or a $125,000 procedure. And these numbers are actually not crazy. So the person sitting there going, wow, I really need this. I really desire this. I don't want to be in pain. So are you saying to have the emotion around what it would feel like to physically feel better or have the emotion around the money or how would they navigate that? Never about the money. Never. <laughs> Trust me. I even have done workshops for manifesting money. 
I, it was on request and I did it. I didn't want to because I said, I'm not a millionaire. Who am I to do that? <laughs> I am not, uh, you know, super rich, uh, you know, no, I am normal. Like I am a normal person. I mean, normal, like a medium in regards to finances. How, how am I going to do that? Well, I did it and it worked. <laughs> it worked to people, but because it was healing involved. And, uh, and in regards to when someone wants to manifest money, um, it's empty. It's empty. Maybe some people in work and they have the experience. In my case, for me, first, I don't feel anything. <laughs> for me, it's nonsense. But when I want to manifest something that allows me to have the experience that it will, it will give me having more money, <laughs> uh, it's much easier because it's already. And maybe I didn't need money. Maybe I just needed to work on something <laughs> and it's even better because by working, I am helping people. And by helping people, I help more people. And these people help other people, other people. And it's a ripple effect. And at the same time, of course, it's coming um, help, in this case, in form of uh, finances because of the work. And it allows me to move and do more things um, related to invest in more and more and more and to help more people. So this way for me, it works. And when someone wants to manifest money, I always say that, uh, what do you want exactly? It's not the money, it's the experience that you want to have. Regards to the stem cells that someone wants to, to manifest for healing the body, if the doctor say that that's the only solution, well, um, I think it's not, uh, you know, like, uh, Doctors are experts in the field and it's amazing. And they are doing their job amazing, very well. But mm, the solution is oneself. We need to empower the person. We don't rely on the stem cells. Where are going to come from the stem cells? Are they from where do they, you know? So it's making the person disempowered to believe that they need something external to get here. No, no. <laughs> That, I don't think this is right. It might help in the process if it's required, but always with awareness to know that the individual is the one who is activating those stem cells inside the body. And the same as activated that, it can activate as well the healing process and everything. And sometimes it's not so simple to do because there are blockages that are so hidden or unseen, but it's mostly is because the person is so in the mind that is missing the point. And this, this is why it's so important to relax, to center, to be in your heart, because really we have much more than what we think like, and with this much more, I mean power. We are more powerful than what we think we are. And if we diminish this, um, seriously, I understand that medicine has a purpose and, and tools as well have a purpose, a purpose because it's energy the same as water has a purpose. Well, this is necessary. Not all tools and medicines, they are specific things and at each specific time, if the person wants. But we activate everything. The rest of water, we can activate it if we send positive thoughts and emotions and we charge it and then we drink it and it has, a, it has an effect. The same as everything that we use. Mm. If we use a plant uh, for anything, we put an intention, it's going to work. If we use the plant not putting an intention, the way we are feeling before is going to be very similar to the way we feel after because that Alchemy, it has been done in the same, with no transformation. So, so yeah, it's really important that in order to hear, to be aware of how we use energy with ourselves, with our body, with our mind, and with any medicine that we can take. And of course, in regards to an organ implant or something like that, that's in the hands of doctors or someone else when the person is in a big danger that is not conscious, that's different. We cannot be empowering the person there to make that decision. 
So, and, and yeah, that's where we all play together as a team, each person doing its own bit. And meantime, the person who might not be conscious is still operating from spirit as well. Thank you. Good. Um, interesting. So <clears throat> I did a little digging and from what I can tell in 2006, you were chosen or in the running to become Miss Spain. This is true? Yes, this is embarrassing. <laughs> it's embarrassing. <laughs> yes, but it was so funny. <laughs> yeah, it's a very long story, very, very long. <laughs> and I learned a lot, a lot through the experience, a lot. I didn't want to win. It was not my intention to be Miss Spain or anything because no, but I went first with uh, a group of friends to celebrate and they didn't want to because they say, ah, we are ugly. I say, ugly? Let's go. We are going to celebrate. I'm sure that at least someone, one of us is going to win a, an award or something. <laughs> someone is going to win something for sure. Anyway, we go. That was in Granada. And, uh, uh, and, and yeah, I didn't expect. We were passing, passing, passing. And then I, I was in the final and I was like, well, yeah, I am already closer to win something. I didn't expect, was a fun, let's enjoy. And then I, I got the uh, first runner. And and I was so happy, but people were not happy. And uh, the judge as well, the people who selected the game to stay with me after, and they say, Raquel, you need to go next year. This has not been right. And it's like, what do you mean? And a lot of people talking that was not right. And say, how not? She is amazing. She's so beautiful. And she was my favorite as well, the winner. And she's a very nice girl. Anyway, a lot of legal stuff going on in there. So at the end, they, it didn't work out. So they, they had to put me uh, on, on that position. Wow. Yeah, that was very long. And I spoke with her because I told her, I don't want to do, I, I don't want to accept it because uh, it's you. And I want to know how are you doing and to help you in anything that you need. But she told me, Raquel, I, I really want you to do to go to Miss Spain because uh, I like you, and but just be careful with women. <laughs> she said, be careful. Be careful that because she, she had a, a problem because other girls make, making a mess and that. And I say, okay, I, I, didn't, I didn't really understand. Oh, it was true. <laughs> it was true. Yeah, like some girls get like, oof. Very, very nuts, <laughs> very nuts. Anyway, so I, I was happy and said, okay, she, she wants me, I go and, um, and, uh, and enjoy. And, uh, and yeah, at that time I didn't use internet. And, uh, and then um, my family and my boyfriend at that time, my friends, they were telling me what was happening. And some girls, finally they found who they were, but they were passing, uh, using my name, on forums and I'm making big travels, like very bad stuff. <laughs> and meantime, I was enjoying and, and having fun, you know, with all the girls in Miss Spain that like we had an amazing time. But yeah, they were like uh, stuff that, oof, like it was really, really tough with uh, these crazy people. And uh, and yeah, we had a, a very good time. And, uh, and that year in, all the girls, like we became friends and it was very positive and I learned a lot from the experience. It was very fun and very superficial as well. <laughs> <laughs> Which but... is so funny for a psychic. <laughs> say, a, yeah. Psychic yes. with Spain. Because now you're in this contest, right? To become a cover model for Maxim, right? Yes. Yes. Uh... It's cool. Like I read about it and I was reading in, you know, whatever the write-up is about you with your picture and stuff, you know, there's a lot of photos of you. And then it says, if you win, you want the money because you want to create a documentary. And it's funny, you did the whole thing with water is sort of perfect because uh, the documentary you want to create is called Giving Water a Voice. So talk about that. What's the intention for the magazine, for the documentary? What are you creating? Well, this is very funny because... Uh... Only four friends knows it. <laughs> only, only now the whole world. But thank you, <laughs> Debbie. 
And, uh, <laughs> but I did it as a test to say, let's see how it goes. And it goes f further. I will ask people to vote. And, and yeah, now it's going a bit further. And I might have to ask people to vote as well, openly. And uh, it came to my mind, like, uh, it was like, maybe a few months ago, it came the name Maxim. And it's like, why? And I go and immediately I, I go into there to enter the competition. And, and something was telling me to, to see him. It's like, I don't want that. <laughs> I'm like, no, I am too old. <laughs> I'm 34. <laughs> I know. And something say, check, check, check. And say, let's see. And then uh, it, it talk about the, the price. And, and, and then I, I say, Wait a moment, why I'm being here? I have a connection here to something. It's giving me a feeling that something to do with women. I already have a program to help women. I don't know yet what it is, but something's telling me to go there that something is, you know, it has a reason. So then uh, I say, of course, this is a way to work with my documentary. <laughs> it's, it's very helpful, I say, and I'm sure that through doing this, uh, it has the message there, and people who see it might be interested in being part of the documentary. So I just did it, and I said, well, why not? I have a lot of photos that I don't use because I'm too sexy. I said, I just put it there. <laughs> well, too sexy, just bikini. But, <laughs> but I said, I just... Uh, Give it a go. I, I, I hope you win. I hope you win. You're such a character. <laughs> I mean, you deserve Thank to you. be, you, you and your beautiful energy deserve to be on the cover. And um, so if we can vote and we can support you, where do we go to do that? Is it maxime.com or is it, what is it? Maximecovergirl.com and uh, my name, Raquel Escobar Rios. Okay, maximecovergirl.com. Yes, and her name, Raquel Escobar Rios. Beautiful. Yes. I want to tell people a little bit. So akin to this, you offer people, I don't know if this is a thing of the past, or you still do, but I know you have a beauty program. And so for people just, you know, it's not like hair and makeup kind of thing. It's like intensive healing, right? So your inner beauty comes out to be reflected in your life, but you're so much more than psychic. You do past lives, you do spirit guides, ancestors, Akashic records, psychic, obviously. And to that end, Raquel, can you do something for us right now? And I'll leave it up to you, whatever feels right. But will you do something for the listeners and the viewers? Um, give us some kind of a, a message, a healing, a channeling, however you would I'll be moved to do that for us. I think we would love to receive something. Okay, I'm not going to sing a song because I'm not a singer. I'm not flamenco. That would be super fun, by the way. <laughs> by the way, that what was your specialty when you're running for Miss Spain? What did you do for your talent? They didn't, uh, they didn't ask anyone to do that. Ah. They do it more in the international ones. Like Miss World and things like that, but in Miss Spain, were, they didn't ask for a talent, which it would be, it would have been very fun, you know, because <laughs> my my favorite thing is improvising, improvisation. So, so yeah, let's see, let's see what comes because um, it's not from my mind, uh, you know, it, it comes from my heart, and uh, I think it's a message what is coming through, and it's for the listener that is right now hearing this conversation to enjoy the time because time is um, limited. Hmm. Time is uh, quantified in the spins around the sun that we count as a year. And uh, there is more that we don't see yet, but the time that we have is to, to enjoy, to not waste it in complaining or in feeling bad. Because at the end, when we pass, we realize that it's all gone and we cannot go back. 
and we don't want to hold regrets of what we haven't done. To say, I love you, to give a hug, to be happy, and to do the best of oneself. And this is so important to, to be aware of this every day, at every time, to celebrate every day as if it's the birthday, <laughs> because it's all we have uh, is time. And um, it's time to realize that we are here to enjoy. And by doing this, everything lifts up all the problems that we have, they dissolve and uh, we don't take things seriously anymore. And instead we just uh, have fun and see life or what it is full of gifts and things to be grateful for. And also we realize um, our power that cannot be measured. There is no sound, there is no someone more powerful than another. We all have power. We cannot put on pedestal to someone else for whatever reason. We all are on the pedestal, all together, because there is only one. And this one is the power. In order to use it, we need to be one with everyone, all humanity, mm. Earth and the universe. This is power and this is to be enjoyed. That's the message. Oh my gosh. Yeah. I was, I'm so there. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you. Oh. Yeah. I, when you talk about we are all one with the earth, with the universe, I really do want to talk to you about extraterrestrials. And I, <laughs> the whole subject yes. is so mind blowing to me for so many reasons, but I'm sort of, I want to say I'm deeply in it at this point in my life. At the same time, I'm just constantly amazed at what is revealed to me. Like, I feel like I live this wild life and I just had an experience yesterday with somebody um, who I went to see like for medical reasons. And all of a sudden she's talking to me about really um, intense UFO kind of stuff regarding me. And I was just like, it was so powerful. And when we were done, she said, um, I'm going to tell you what planet you're from. Do you want to know? Anybody who watches this show, Dare to Dream, has heard me say a million times, I want to know what planet. I want to know what planet. I think that was a powerful manifestation because I've always joked you could get a DNA swab and find out I'm European and I'm, you know, whatever. I'm from Asia. I'm from there. But it doesn't like it would be so much more interesting to find out what really what our lineage is. And so yesterday that was bequeathed to me, right? It was a gift. Somebody finally told me the planet and God, it made so much sense. And so I want to talk to you about that. And I want to, I want to ask you like some of your knowing about that. And I want to also ask you if you, Raquel, um, do you know people have been abducted and do you know how to, how to work with people who have been abducted and things like that? And in regard to adapted, it doesn't come anything to my mind right now. But what it comes right now is the fact of them, aliens, uh, coming here and materializing in here. Because there are some that they can materialize and dematerialize. Because for them, I don't know, I don't know how to explain. It's like, uh, they know how to move in between uh, space yes, because the space and time mm -hmm. is very interesting. Yeah. And, uh, and, uh, and yeah, and they come here and in regards to go into the spaceship in dreams is very, oh. I, the cleaner. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, yeah, in, uh, in regards to in dreams, uh, yes, you know, like in me and me as well, 
Oh, really? But yes, and uh, and people as well. And in regards to physical, well, um, what can I say? I remember once uh, I was working in a movie and uh, I was in a room with girls and it was like a very late at night, like maybe two or three a.m. And and I sat in the middle of the, of the girls. If we were in the forest, and uh, and I sat down in, in the in the middle, and I lie down. And then when when I come back, there is no one there. And I say, "Oof, such a nap." <laughs> and it was winter. Imagine how cold. So <laughs> such a nap I took. And then he came a friend, and she saw. It's like, look, she was having a heart attack. And it's like, what? Such, how did you do that? And it's like, what? So you just appear. And he's like, come on. I just been sleeping. He said, no, we all been looking in the forest. The ladies from the movie looking at me everywhere and, and asking me, how did I do that? And he's like, I just been sleeping. I woke up and nobody's here. <laughs> I don't know. And they were like, I promise you that you just appear lying down. It's like, no. And they were like, the AD and, and her, they were like shocked and it's like, really, how do you do that? It's like, no, I was sleeping. Anyway, that was not the only time. It happens always uh, on a set. No idea why. Now people complain about the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> I, I am there, I, I sat down, I said, I'm going to chill a little bit. I do like that. And I noticed that people don't notice me I say, and say, okay, that's strange, people pass by. But then the problem is when they complain because I appear there and I wasn't there before. I say, but I have it here and I just appear. That was very strange. And they tell me, how I, did I do that? I was like, doing what? Appear, just appear. I was like, that's very weird because from my experience, it's strange. You know what I mean? But I, I have as well experiences, with, especially with glasses of water. This is, uh, we can talk a lot. <laughs> we can talk a lot of, of things that are, I, I don't know, outside of the physical laws. And, and, when, and for me, it's normal to see that because it's my life uh, and at night. And, and seeing objects moving or, or things like that is normal, you know? Like poster gay people freak out for me is normal since I am a kid. Uh, it's more real than what people think is real. When you, you know? say th you see things moving, what do you mean specifically? Well, not just saying it's, they are moving. It's just objects that they are moving by. The, like, of course, someone is moving them, and um, I mean a spirit or me in a spirit as well. And uh, just to call my attention or to or to show something like symbolic or it's. So many things, like so many. And yeah. so, the, so that that's really I've never heard a story quite like that. Being on a set, that's that is really interesting. That they would tap into you there. <clears throat> have has it ever happened to you in other realms? Like, do you have the sense that you've been taken much more than that? And and let me go even deeper. Yeah, do you think that most people have actually been taken, whether you, you said in their dreams or, you know, they pass out somewhere and don't really realize. Yeah, a lot happened. of people might not be aware and it happens. Mm -hmm. And some people think that, oh, that some people they have experiences or some people they see spirits or others are psychic. Yeah, maybe these people, they have more experience with this and they are more aware of it. But from my, from what I understand and see, I, for me, everyone is a medium because we all communicate and some people use it more in a specific way than another. And in regards to psychic, the same. And, and um, seeing spirits or other beings, they, some people see more since they are very young and they never lose it. But other people, they might start seeing at the age of 50. And then it becomes so strong in the reality that it's much stronger than someone who has more experience of this for all the life. So 
So yeah, anything is possible and it can happen to anyone because no one is more special or has more magic powers and all that. We all are. We what is all... your understanding of Lyra, of the planet? L-Y-R-E. Yes. Tell me about that. Well, these beings that are like... Uh, like cats, aliens. right? Like yeah. sea lions. Yeah, I have a very strong experience. This is very strong. Um, that, that was in 2016. Yeah, the 4th of January, my grandfather was passing away. So I was holding his feet because the night before, uh, my cousin, she got very ill. I did a session on her. And at the end, it came to she connect, connect her feet to the, to the sun. We were talking, what does it mean? Anyway, my grandfather is passing and I get guided to connect his feet with the sun. So I, I go and do that very strong. Of course, I was avoiding him to die, but my guides were telling me it's his time. He has to go. And he's like, no, no way. And uh, anyway, it was very painful. And then uh, it, it passes through a lion with blue light through me. And then the nurse enters and as you say, he just passed. And I say, the lion? Is he the lion? And then my cousin, she say, Raquel, you remember that writing that you saw me at the end in the signature? You draw someone that looks like a lion? I say, yes. That is someone who passed me a letter. So I channeled the letter and it was a letter for my life. And, and the signature was a man looking like a lion. And she say, so that's our grandfather. And I was like, Maybe. <laughs> okay. And since then, it happens very often that when I close my eyes, I see that lion. And also recently, I got uh, told that I am the lion. But for some reason, I still don't know because these things, it takes years in order to understand everything. Years. And I am still connecting dots to things of my early childhood in regards to this phenomena. It's still, it's it's a lifetime thing to connect dots. So, okay, so the lion is me. It's something to do with my grandfather as well. Mm. And uh, multi-dimensions and so many things. So, yeah, I have been alien in other lives, you know, that I mentioned, but also I'm a lion. I don't know, <laughs> maybe. And anyway, if we all come from the same place, you know, and also past lives and everything. So whatever it is, you know, if we identify each individual, if it's a human or alien as one, well, I think we simplify and make life much easier. <laughs> you know, it's amazing what you just shared. So like I get little goosebumps, you know, yesterday, and I know very little, by the way, I, you know, Arcturians, the Pleiadians, the Reptilians, the Dracos, blah, blah, blah. I know all that stuff, but still I don't densely know and follow that, <clears throat> excuse me. So yesterday, this incredibly gifted person that it took me so long to get a, an appointment with her. And really, I honestly, I was just there for something medical. So everything turned around. It was like, clearly I was receiving exactly what I was supposed to from her. She had gifts way beyond medicine. And so, you know, at the end when she said, you know, they, they really would prefer you don't leave yet. They want to let you know what planet you're from. And do you want to know? And that's when I said, yes. Oh my God. I've, I've wanted to know so much for so long. And she said, Lyra, I want you to look it up. And I started laughing because she said to me, it's the planet of cats and lions. And I said, that's crazy because um, <clears throat> when I let my hair down my whole life, people have said, you look like a lion, like you have a mane. And, um, you know, I have these wonderful tattoos. I don't know if you could see them here, but, oh, it's so funny. There they are. Anyway, they're not coming out, but they're, they're these beautiful little butterflies and it's all I've ever wanted. I've never wanted a tatted body. That's enough for me, but I've sort of been a little obsessed for a long time with getting a lion somewhere, the head of a lion. And my rising is in Leo. And um, I could just say so much about that, but I looked at the pictures. I did go on 
um, I did Google it last night and I looked around and I looked at the faces and read some of what the people are like. And I thought, although they're very tall, I'm not very tall, so I'm five four, but <laughs> they are supposed to be very tall in general. But the face, like the kind of this whole thing, I just, it was very interesting and um, very apropos. So I'm, I'm excited to learn more about it. And <clears throat> they say how purposeful the Lyrans are about being here right now and their work, like they came with mission, with purpose, right? Because they came from a place that was besieged with war with the Dracos and another race and it, you know, didn't, the lions didn't do very well. <laughs> so the other races are a little bit more militaristic. And so they really, they also say they're often, the Lyrans are often from a Lemuria. And um, so, you know, yet another example of a time when there was this utopian society and things went awry, the people didn't pay attention and everything imploded. So this time, and you can see when you look out at Earth and everything that's going on with the people and the planet, it makes sense. If Lyrans wanted to come back at this time and say, I'm here with great purpose and a mission, I wanna get this right. And Lord, if there's anything you could say about me, it's definitely that. You know, I've, I forever, I just have always known what I wanted to do. And when that shifted, I surrendered and then the correct thing came and I've, I feel like I've been on purpose a lot in my life and I feel like life has often redirected me. It'll allow me to be in a place and then I'll say, ha, ha, ha. And you thought that was everything. Now, you know, do podcasting, do book coaching. And by the way, you're a healer. So go out and start doing some of that and doing retreats. And it's like, really, what can you do but surrender and say, yes, you know, okay, I'm in. And, and so that really felt like it fit for me with the, the Lyrans and what they were saying about why they've come here right now and just this, what keeps them going. <laughs> exactly. It's very important to remember the mission because we are not here to pass time and to, uh, what can we do? Oh, there is a virus. Oh, we cannot do anything. You know, no, we have a mission. <laughs> and when you go out and you do the retreat and you interview the people, you have the interaction that is synchronized. Each specific event and each thing is leading you more and more and more. And oh, everything, the more you are in the synchronicity with everything, the more you are in your mission. And all it requires is just to trust. And it's not trust something outside, it's trust the mission that is supporting you already. And that is everything perfect and it's calling you and, and trust and uh, being your power. Mm. So this Very is, powerful. Yeah, thank you so much. Um, and thank you for addressing that. That's so interesting. I would ask you about that planet and you would have that incredible story about your grandfather. So like no accident playing out right here, right now. And God knows we were lions together, girl, on Libra. You know, I would not, I would not put it past us. We have and been we connected. Are. Yeah. We are now. <laughs> and we are now too. Yeah. And um, yeah, I want to thank, I just want to say like, as an aside, um, you have, you had a friend, a client, who listened to one of my one of my interviews? I think he listened to my interview with Ruben Langdon, and he wrote me an email. And I always love hearing from people. Usually, though, it's on social media. They'll post or on YouTube. They'll write comments, and it's awesome. But he really took the time to find out who I was, my email address. I mean, I was impressed. And he wrote me this lovely email about how he felt about the show. And then he said, "Listen, I just got this download. Like." I'm supposed to introduce you to Raquel and Raquel has been my teacher. And he, he said just a little bit about you and I get pitched hundreds of times a week. I can't even, right? And I, and I have learned to just get out of the way and let energy take over because all these publicists and agents are writing to me, they want their folks on my show. 
and I don't, I don't feel it for a lot of people. But when he said you, I think I looked you up online. I went to your website and it was just, you know, there was nothing explicable with, except for, yeah, you need to connect with her. And then you and I had a Zoom and then we had another Zoom and then I went to one of your Zoom classes and then, you know, and you're in London and I'm in California. And it's like, it's so beautiful in a way how small the world is and how nice it is, you know, like your, your client, your friend who connected us. Ultimately, he was right. He got a download that was, he followed his intuition. It was absolutely correct. And he runs a digital uh, newspaper. I think he, he does very, very well for himself too. Um, so that was just very cool. You don't know who's always out there listening or who, who you're going to impact. So I just want to express gratitude that you and I are here now in this moment, Raquel, together because of someone who listened to one of my shows. Hmm. Yes. Perfectly. Yeah, his name is Mike. And, uh, and he's so into multi-dimensions and, um, and connecting people. And he might not be aware, but um, he is really a, a connecting people, <laughs> like a big part of his purpose. And uh, he has a, a brilliant mind as well. And um, not many people know him, but uh, but yeah, his mind is um, is brilliant. His inspirations and his reasoning, like he can see the um, the patterns in life and also the um, the symbols, like uh, because everything that, that we have around is a symbol and a message. And we don't know how to read it. Of, of course, if we do a tarot reading or we use tools, yeah, it's a reading and it's then, but really, we can read already our environment. It's already speaking to us. And uh, if you go to someone's home as well, you can see and it's telling you a lot of information of what's going on. So he is very aware of these things and his mission in life and, and purpose. And, uh, and yeah, I'm so happy that he connected us and, he really felt it and to trust, you know. And what are you next year yeah. to dream? What are your future dreams and goals? Oof, uh, well, uh, I see this life as a dream. And at night, I have a lot of dreams, like uh, most people can remember, because some people, sometimes we don't remember it. But in regards to a dream or something that I would like to achieve, um, um, I am living it already, <laughs> and, uh, and and yeah, it feels amazing because it's like uh, how easy, <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like once uh, I am on doing the right thing, what I feel guided, uh, it is, it responds, and it's not because the dream is not my dream. It's uh, probably part of humanity or humanity's dream and this is why so my dream is not mine it's not just for me it's for everyone and this is why it's happening <laughs> and uh, you know and, and this is why because it's not just up to me it's up to everyone but by doing what i meant to do which is very enjoyable and it's very fun Everything fits perfectly, and and it happened in the in best ways that the mind can imagine, because the mind will put like, oh, but I don't like that color. I don't like this, and I prefer like this. <laughs> and that's so silly. Like, <laughs> I I just my dream is not in the mind; it's in the heart. <laughs> And when, when I let the dream come from my heart, uh, then I leave it. And while I am leaving, I don't let the mind uh, interact or mess around. No, no, no. The mind is a tool to use it. You know, so I use my mind, living my dream, and it's fulfilling, and it's the heart. And 
and it's peaceful and it's so full of love and excitement and yeah i think my my dream is right now mm. in the present well thank you so much for coming on the show i can't even like your energy is so infectious and contagious and so uplifting i'm really grateful to know you thank you the same you are exactly the same you are uh, such an inspiration and and you allow the information to come through anyone as well <laughs> you are an amazing facilitator mm, it's a beautiful thing oh my gosh folks if you want to connect with her go to galacticrhythm.com and again i want to put this out so we can vote because i want your dream to come true of giving water a voice documentary and that is maxim m-a-x-i-m covergirl.com and then slash your name raquel escobar rios and you could google that anyway and you'll find yeah. her there let's support her dream because that's what the show is all about and beyond <laughs> to libra and beyond so awesome thank you so much and i end today's show with this quote from rumi I have been a big Rumi fan these days. And the quote is, do you know what you are? You are a manuscript of a divine letter. You are a mirror reflecting a noble face. This universe is not outside of you. Look inside yourself, everything that you want. You are already that. Subscribe to the Dare to Dream podcast and hear this weekly number one transformation conversation. Next week, coming back to the show is the Australian wizard, Rebecca Dawson. Mama Mia, last time she channeled and she already wrote to me, she wants to channel again. And she channels information about the earth, the human race and other planetary systems. She's been doing it over 20 years. And you know what? I'm even going to put it out there. If you've got a question, let me know and I will ask it of her. If you're listening to this on podcast and you want to see what we look like, because we look pretty good <laughs> and it's a fun thing to do. Absolutely. Join us on YouTube. Go to youtube.com slash Debbie Dashinger, D-E-B-B-I-D-A-C-H-I-N-G-E-R. And remember, don't just dare to dream. Dare to turn all your dreams into your reality. You deserve it.